Hello, my name is Xavier Pick. Today I'm going to talk about the dip pen, which may seem a completely outdated, anachronistic drawing implement. In the 21st century we have incredible tools at our disposal, but the dip pen is still an essential family member in my drawing kit. I'm going to talk about the variety of different holders that we use. I'm going to address the range of different nibs at our disposal and how we can clean them and look after them and also look at the inks and other wet media when we're using a dip pen. Let's look at the anatomy of the dip pen and nib. First of all, the overall anatomy. We have the pen holder, we have the grip, we have the pen insert where the nib goes in and then we have the pen nib itself and also the reservoir which can go on top of the nib or below it but it does allow you to continue drawing for a long time not worried so much about the ink running out. Looking at the nib itself we have the tail, the heel or the base which goes into the pen cert and then you have the main body or shank which is the overall part of the nib and then you have the vent or breather hole. It acts like a reservoir and it feeds the slit which goes down the central axis of the nib. We have the shoulders, the sides of the dip pen itself which bend round. And then we have the tines which is an essential part of the nib. The more pressure you put down on the nib, the thicker the line we have. And then we have the tip or the point and that can be sort of varying sizes depending on the type of nib you choose to have. The main reason we use a dip pen is for the quality of line. We can get this as well through the type of nibs we use. My favourite is the William Mitchell script nibs. And with the thicker nibs, by simply rolling the nib while you're drawing offers a dramatic change of line weight. For a really fine point, for example, I use these antique pointy finger nibs. If you collect old nibs like I do, remember to care for them. They're not mass produced anymore and they can get clogged up and rust. I use cotton wool buds and a cleaning solution and a little spray of WD-40 protects them from corrosion, especially in humid environments. Let's now look at the holders that I use. There is a profusion of holders to choose from, but for me the most comfortable and inexpensive are these wooden ones with a cork grip. And for an even cheaper nibless option, a bamboo dip pen or even a homemade wooden sharpened skewer does a fantastic job with free-flowing, expressive lines. One of the biggest powers of the dip pen is the freedom it gives us to be expressive. You're not constrained by ink cartridges like with a modern-day fountain pen. You can splatter, drag and scrape the ink around the surface. Ink is gorgeous, it's rich, assertive, and there's a plethora of brands and types to choose from. For permanence and water resistance, a high quality Indian ink with the finest of grain particles is best. You want the ink to run smooth. Ice trays are super useful too, so you can dilute the ink a little bit with water and have a broad value range. You can just use diluted ink to start with as you build up the foundation of your drawing rather than committing to a heavy, darker line first. Inks that are dye-based won't clog your nibs, but they are chemically reactive. Here I'm using some bleach to draw with on a surface of Parker Quink ink. It has a magical effect, but it will fade with exposure to light, and the bleach will rot the paper. It's always best to scan this type of work in to save it. And if you want your work to last longer, then use an ink that's non-reactive. There are some splendid white inks on the market for bold, lacy, icing-like white lines. Strong contenders have superb opacity. They're not too viscous because I always want the ink to flow well. I do hope you are curious with such materials and experiment and explore. Why do I really use a dip pen? Well, it's to connect with the past. It's how our ancestors made marks and our world is rushing too fast.